So before I start talking about natural logarithms, I want to remind you of the common logarithm. And the common logarithm was written as log of x. And that was equivalent to log base 10 of x. And it's the common one because it's used quite a bit. And they just, you know, usually it's just log. So if you ever see just log, that's meaning that the base is 10. And this is the button that you find on your calculator when it comes to logarithms. Now, natural logarithms are very similar in that uh, they have all the same properties and uses. Um, and also, you're going to see a button on your calculator that looks like that. So this is ln, and it's the natural logarithm. So the natural, natural logarithm of x is equivalent to log base e of x. And e is an irrational number, uh, but it is a constant. This is not a variable. Um, and again, you see this button in your on any calculator. Now e, uh, I just said, is an irrational number. And in fact, it's the second most famous irrational number just next to pi. And I want to talk a little bit about E before we get into uh, using natural logarithms. But in reality, you've already learned everything about natural logarithms because they have the same property as any other logarithm. So the number E has a kind of interesting and strange history in mathematics in that it showed up in a lot of people's work but was never really defined. And the first time it kind of rears its head is with this mathematician named John Napier. And he's kind of credited uh, with discovering logarithms. And this was during the early 1600s. Um, and in fact, you know, sometimes natural logarithms are referred to as Napierian logarithms after John Napier. Um, but, you know, he didn't define it. He just showed that it ha there was this number that had this effect when dealing with logarithms. So some time went by before E was really discussed again. And we're talking about 1647 when the Flemish Jesuit mathematician Gregory de St. Vincent uh, was computing the area under a rectangular hyperbola. Um, and, you know, this number came up because of dealing with the limit. And um, But again, it wasn't explic explicitly defined um, even at that time. It just kind of showed up again. And when people later on had the def definition of E... They went back and looked at the works of St. Vincent and John Napier and realized that they were actually using it. But again, they didn't really even define it. And then along came uh, the Bernoulli family, which is one of the most famous mathematical families of all time. And Jacob Bernoulli was working on this idea of compound interest. Um, and, you know, compound interest is where you put money into a, you know something that's earning you interest and then you keep reinvesting the profit. Now this is the formula for compound interest where A represents the amount you've made, P equals the principal or the beginning amount that you put into this investment, R is the interest rate you received. Uh, T is the number of years that we're talking about. And N refers to how many times the interest was compounded per year. And so usually, you know, compound interest comes about when, uh, you know, you're compounding it yearly. Maybe you would compound it monthly, you know, you could compound it daily. But Bernoulli was interested in what was going on if you were continuously compounding it. Now, this wouldn't really make too much a difference in how much money you would receive. Because when you're compounding it, like let's say every second, 
you're really not adding that much money to the whole equation. And so, you know, that's why it's usually done, you know, usually at, at the smallest amount monthly. And so Bernoulli was really interested in this part of the formula. And this would be as if, you know, your principal was $1 and you were getting a 100% interest rate, which of course that's not going to happen. And um, it was per one year. And so he was really finding the limit of this because as n increases to infinity, that would be a continuous, um, uh, continuous compounded rate. You know, so you know if it was, you know, n is again how many times per year it's compounded. So if it was twelve, that would refer to uh, every month. If it was three hundred and sixty-five, that would be every day. Um, if it was compounded every hour, that would be n would equal 8,760. And so continuously, it would be n would be infinity. And so when he was working with this, a number would keep reappearing. And he didn't call it e, but this is really the first time e ever showed up. Or, or at least had some kind of definition. So E existed for a while in this form where it didn't have its name yet, but people realized that it would appear in certain situations. And in 1748, this mathematician named Leonard Euler um, published some work that explained the whole idea and all the ideas surrounding E. Now, I didn't write down the name of his work uh, because it's in Latin and I didn't want to try to say it anyway. Uh, but this, this guy, Euler, is considered one of the greatest mathemat mathematicians to ever live. Um, you know, he, he also dabbled in uh, mechanics, in fluid dynamics, and in optics, and astronomy, and music theory. Uh, you know, he was a physicist. And so, you know, this guy was a super great mind. And uh, he computed E to the uh, to 18 decimal places. And a lot of people think that, you know, E refers to his name. Uh, I guess that was is debatable. And maybe it was just the next vowel to use because apparently he used A a lot in his work. Um, but he is credited with most of our mathematical notation, including, you know, the idea of functions. So, you know, he, he's, he's credited with finally naming E. So unlike pi, where there's competitions to see who can memorize the most decimal spots uh, for, for pi, you know, no one's really doing that with E. It's not quite that famous and, and maybe not quite as exciting. Um, but it is irrational, and you can find uh, as many decimal spots as you want, because remember, an irrational number never terminates and it never repeats. So here's the first 10,000 digits of E. And this is computed either by the formula I showed before of compound interest, or... There's another formula that uses um, that uses factorials that are summed together. But of course, you could keep going on and on. You could do more than ten thousand if you know you really wanted to. So you may be wondering what this really has to do with you and what you need to get done. Well. You know, you've already learned about logarithms, and so the natural logarithms are no different. You know, they, you treat them exactly the same. So, you know, if you had, for instance, the natural log of x equals 3, you know, you can still change this into its exponential form. Just remember that the natural log is log base e, so this would be e to the third equaling x. 
And, you know, on your calculator, you have this button, E. It's, it probably, you know, looks like maybe E to the caret. Uh, maybe it looks like E to the X, okay? So you can just compute whatever E to the third is. And that would be uh, 20 point zero nine, depending on how far out you wanted to go. Okay, and all the properties are uh, of logarithms still apply to natural logs as well. So you know, if you had natural log of three x, this is equivalent to the natural log of three plus the natural log of x. Right, that's the product property of lo of logarithms. And you have the quotient property, natural log of 7 over y. You know, you can still write that as natural log of 7 minus natural log of y. The power property, right, the natural log of, let's say, x to the 5th would be 5 times the natural log of x. Okay, so... Everything is the same. So if you understand all the rules with logarithms, then you already understand all the rules with natural logs. It's just that the base of, this, of these logarithms is this irrational number E. So in a previous video, uh, you know, the one about just plain logarithms, I mentioned about the common logarithm, and I mentioned that again at the beginning of this one, where, you know, it's... This, you know, natural logs and common logs are very useful because you can just compute them on any calculator. Now, you're not always going to have a base that you can deal with, but there is this change of base formula, and this is the same one as it, as it was when we were talking about common logs. And again, what it's saying is, is if you have this base that you don't know what to do with, you can pick any base that you want and set up the uh, number m in the numerator and the uh, original base in the denominator and you can still compute it out. So it's really up to you if you're going to do this step whether or not you want to use natural logs or the common log base 10. But it'll work with either way and I'm going to show you that here uh, right now. Okay so let's say you're asked to compute log base 5 of 8. You know, you're welcome to go through and change it to its exponential form, right? That would be 5 to the x equals 8. And, you know, you notice that you can't get the bases the same, and so then you're kind of stuck. So this is where the, the change of base formula would come into play. And so I'm going to do it both ways, you know, and again, you can choose any base that you want for this to work, but... It wouldn't make any sense to choose anything besides the natural log or just log base 10. And since we're doing natural log, I'm gonna in, in this you know video, I'm going to do that one first. But again, it doesn't really matter which one you use. So you could say, well, this is equivalent to the natural log of 8 over the natural log of 5. Okay, and so when we compute those out, we would get natural log of 8, which is 2.079, divided by the natural log of 5, which is 1.609. And when we divide those out, we would get approximately 1.292. Okay, but again... The change of base formula works with any base that you want. So, you know, if you didn't choose the natural log, you should choose the common log. And so that would be log base 10 of 8 over log base 10 of 5. And when we compute those, we would get log of 8 equaling 0.903. Over log of 5, which would be 0.699, and then we divide those, and we would get 1.292. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you use, but you know, you're going to use one of those um, because that's what 
any calculator can handle. So again, natural logs are no big deal. It's really um, just something that shows up because of this number E and all the properties and rules are still the same as any other logarithm.